Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, and I am just about to head out to New Mexico. So I think every night before I do trips like this, my mind is just racing like crazy. So I was in bed by around 12 o'clock, and I planned on waking up at 7. It's probably, what time is it right now? 8, 11. So I am kind of a little bit late, but I managed to get everything done within about an hour. I do think the morning of, I feel like I'm the most busy and that sucks because there are so many things you can't pack until the morning of, like chargers and all the shower accessories, those you can't bring until day of, hair dryer, face skincare stuff. So I got all of that. I also packed her food already, so I should probably get going. But I filled it full of frozen vegetables. That's gonna, Those are gonna be my ice packs. But I did one last walkthrough and I'm pretty sure I have everything. So I'm a little, ah, I feel like the drive is kind of daunting for me, even though I've done 10 hours to Utah. People outside, annoying. Uh, just getting in the way of my train of thought, but I should probably get going. I wanna to try to not record too much during my drive over, just because I don't want too much to delay it, and I don't really like driving at night, so I will probably get there in the evening though, but I wanna to try to minimize as much of that time as possible. So I did most of my packing Monday, I did some of it yesterday, and I have all the cat stuff set up, and I vacuumed a little bit actually because it was kinda of gross and I have to throw out the trash, so I'm going to head out. Okay, this is what I managed with my car. My car is so small and it's not tall enough, so I decided to use her crate without the top half. And I wanted to keep the door on it because I wanted her to have something to kind of push against in case I'm braking and she needs something to stop her momentum. Aside from the bottom of the crate, actually, that might work well for her. But that one I want to use for driving around once we arrive. This is the top half of that crate and underneath that is a styrofoam box with her food in it. So I managed to fit everything in. The luggage is going to be here. All of my stuff is over here. And this is actually gonna be really freaking hard for her to get out of the car every time I need to. Ah, oh, man, my car is too small. But this is what I have and I, I'm going to finally head out, so wish me luck that I don't get too tired. Right now we are stopped at a rest area. I've been driving for about two and a half hours and she was showing signs of just kind of being restless. A tiny bit. She didn't sleep at all, so I decided to stop. I didn't really need to piss and I doubt she really needed to, but she definitely went. Um, it's a little bit hot out here, so I don't really want to stop for too long. I just wanted to give her some time outside of the crate, stretch her legs a little bit. <laughs> it actually took her so long to get out of the crate because I have this really shitty, look at this shitty setup I have. The crate is pushed all the way up to the chair. So it made it very hard for her to get out because it was a higher elevation and it just wasn't clear access to the door. I didn't want to move everything just for a stop at the rest area, so I'll probably just give her some water now, um, switch sides on her e collar, and then we're gonna get ready to move on again because I really don't want to take too many rests or too long of a rest. I was feeling tired, but I'm feeling okay now. If I'm feeling extreme tiredness, where I'm falling asleep, then I will definitely stop and take a nap. So, time to continue. Wow, so loud. I decided to stop at this store, or restaurant, I guess, called Kaleidoscope Juice, and I wanted a healthy lunch. Okay, maybe this was a bad place to record, but anyways, I needed to stop and get some food, and I wanted to let Riley out for a little bit, because since our last break, it was about two and a half hours. So right now I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, which is like slightly northeast of Phoenix. And I got myself a smoothie. I decided this would be my lunch because I didn't want to stop and eat solid food. And I just kind of want to keep going. After maybe about like 10 minutes rest, I will continue onwards. But it's like 95 degrees out here. It's crazy hot. Like you feel the heat wave the second you step out of your car. Doing good. Oh yes, I will have to feed her some water actually. I'm gonna go get some water for my car. 
Break. Good. That's it. <clears throat> <laughs> Cutie. That was about a 15 minute break. Um, I still have plenty of smoothie to drink, so that's good. Hopefully that will help me stay awake. After my last stop, I did stop again for roughly 20 minutes to take a nap because I was starting to fall asleep. But now I actually feel pretty rejuvenated, I hope, for a six hour drive. So maybe for that one, I'm hoping to just stop one more time for rest or just to let her out for the three hour mark and then by then I should be there so so far I <laughs> obviously have a mix of you know dread and being like oh shit I can't keep looking at the time for how much time is left but um, I love seeing the landscape I love seeing the terrain change it's so cool there was like a part of the drive where it was all sandy and you know what why am I talking about this now I'll talk about this when I get there so let me get started on driving again and I will catch up with you guys later I am trying not to panic and feel super down but I popped the tire and the main cause of that is the side of the road here there's a lot of ditches so I'm pretty sure I must have hit it while going pretty fast. I knew something was wrong with my car because it was making noise, so I pulled over and my front right tire is popped. So the shitty thing is out here, I get no data. Well, I do get a tiny bit, but it's very spotty. So I called Shane and asked him to call me the number of a tow truck company because I've changed my tire before to a spare and it just, wasn't the best experience. I don't feel confident doing it out here, especially because I don't know, the ground is uneven. I remember last time I had trouble properly lifting my car up to switch it out. So I might just rather do a tow truck, but I'm really upset at myself for derailing my plans this way. This is really going to push back whenever I'm going to arrive. I was slated to arrive um, just under four hours. So now I'm lucky that I did pass by a town, I guess, recently. Hopefully I can get this fixed rather quickly, but I'm a little nervous because last time when I needed to get it fixed, at least in San Diego, it was kind of busy. It took some time. So I'll try to stay calm because I don't often, you know, experience situations like this. And you know the funny thing? I saw a couple of people on the side of the road while I was driving out here. And I was thinking like, damn, I'm so glad I'm not one of those people. But now I am. I just have to wait and uh, stay positive. All right, I am out here a couple feet, a couple hundred feet from my car. And I decided to just get out and let her explore sniff a bit because it's gonna take about 15 minutes for the tow truck to get here and I'm honestly at least really glad that I found a place I managed to call a place and they called a tire shop and confirmed that they would be open for me maybe they close earlier than that because it's a small town nearby and honestly I wonder if the operator woman was pissed at me because when I asked her if there were any tire shops open nearby, she was saying at first, oh, they might all be closed. And I was like, really? There's no local shop that's actually open at this time? And she's like, oh, we're a small town, ma'am. Oh, sometimes like there's only eight tire shops in the entire town. And I was just more like, really? <laughs> there's really none open? Like I wanted her to actually confirm it rather than just guess. So it was good that she called. They will be here, I think they're about two three miles away and it's gonna cost about a hundred bucks which you know I'm sad about that because that is a lot of money but I also didn't want to deal with the alternative of trying to put on a spare for my car because I just really don't think it would go over so well I don't know how much a tire replacement usually costs I completely forget I I was so scared because when I hit the side of the road I felt my car kind of like swerve a little bit and I was so concerned that she actually like flipped out in the back of the car so she seems to be okay it's really hard for me not to feel like my plans are ruined although I'm sure I can still get there I'll just be 
pushed back for time and that's okay because I'm not doing anything until tomorrow and tomorrow I can always try to modify my plans to not be too packed so I'm not too tired so wow I thought you found something again hi cute uh, roof <laughs> oh baby I'm sad uh, so earlier she was kind of being a little scared to jump out of the car she was taking so long to jump out that I was starting to get angry with her I really shouldn't be getting angry with her I'm just stressed maybe it is silly to cry over a flat tire. This is the second flat tire I've ever gotten in my life. It turns out that my wheel frame, the middle piece, is bent. So I couldn't keep using it. I couldn't just simply change my tire and be on with it. So I have to stay here overnight. Luckily, there's a Best Western right here and it's totally decent. It has Wi-Fi also, but I need to go get some food. There's a Dairy Queen nearby, so I wanted to go get that. Come back here and then hole up, sleep early, wake up early. There is a Toyota dealership nearly an hour east, and I wanted to get there as soon as they open so they can deal with my car, and then I could be on my way. I really want to get to my Airbnb ASAP. I think for someone like me, for some reason, I think about my plans so particularly and I plan out my day that when something like this happens, I'm like, oh no, it's not going to happen like I thought it would. Because for example, tomorrow I was going to wake up early, hike with Riley, hopefully see nobody, and then I would come back, let her rest and sleep, you know, at the Airbnb and then I would go to Santa Fe but now I uh, I'm not sure if I'll still be able to do that I might actually still be able to do that it would just push things back so I was checking stuff in Santa Fe Meow Wolf is the exhibition that I bought tickets to that I wanted to check out and they close at 8 o'clock so I could actually go there at night and I don't have to go during the afternoon because I tend to plan my day out where I'll be home by like 6, but I don't have to do that. <laughs> so I can always adjust things a little bit, but I'm just feeling a little down. But the local people, he was really nice, even though it was very hard to understand him. They charged me $50. I don't know if that's reasonable or not because he did eventually just put my spare on. So what he did was he took the right back tire and put it on the front because he said, um, I forget why he said to do that. It's probably something to do with the way my car drives, right? Probably better to have my spare on the back than the front. I'm guessing, oh, for turning or whatever. So I will have to be careful and remember tomorrow that when I'm driving to whatever that place is for my dealership, I have to drive slow and be so careful. I cannot have this shit happen again. This is a very expensive mistake and I'm bummed. I was wondering if I could leave Ryla here while I go get my food. I'm honestly too lazy to take her crate out of the car for a one night thing like this. So I was just gonna let her sleep on the bed with me, but I don't know if she'll whine if I leave her here by herself. So it might just be best to take her with me, even though she's tired by now. She's tired. Okay, I'm gonna get some food. Chicken strips and waffles and some fries. <laughs> I guess since I'm just gonna fuck around here, I can probably do a workout later. So here begins my night. I'm pretty exhausted though. Good morning. It is the morning after and I do tend to have the bad habit of lingering too much, right? So today I am going to feel optimistic, refreshed. So it's 6.45 right now. 
I woke up at around 6.10, took a shower, and I'm basically packed, so I'm gonna put everything in the car, and I'm gonna drive over to the town east of here, I think it's called Sholo, and go straight to the Toyota. I'll be getting there a little bit early because it takes 45 minutes, but I really want to be first in line, or at least, I don't know, the work that I need done doesn't take very long, so I'm just really hoping that they'll be generous and do my work right away so I can go straight to Albuquerque. Otherwise, if I have to wait there too long, I might be a little down on that because I've already had a lot of time delayed, right? I'm actually not tired from waking up early. I went to bed at 10.30, so I do feel great about that and I cannot wait to get on the road. I will be definitely driving careful because I'm on my spare and I hope to see the day turn around. I think she slept very comfortably today. She is so dirty. I really need to bathe her when I get home. Look at those filthy paws. Goodness. <laughs> He's so cute. I made it to Sholo, the town. I made it to Hatch Toyota. And I am about 20 minutes before they open. And I was able to get staff to get me inside. So I spoke to a service manager, perhaps. I didn't see his title. But unfortunately, for some reason, this dealership doesn't stock the wheel. So I'm a little bit nervous that I don't even know. Like, what, what is going to happen? Am I going to be stranded here? Because it doesn't sound like... I should be driving on this wheel when it's bent like that. So I am waiting here. He told me to pull up in front of the garage and he said he would go to the back and maybe talk to their parts guy and see if there's anything that could work for me. I'm gonna wait here uh, and see when that guy comes out and see what he says. I am sitting on the lawn right outside the dealership. So they came out and they took my car in so they'll take a look at it and they wanted us out of it obviously so I am sitting here with Riley. I was like over there looking at some more nature -y stuff for a while it's nothing spectacular but it's better than looking at gas stations and cities and buildings and shit so I didn't want to just stand there anymore so I feel like it'd be nice to sit here on the lawn have her lie down and I'll play a match of auto chess on my phone. I think that would really make time fly. And actually, maybe in about 30 minutes, I'll start heading over. I'm so happy that they actually took my car in first thing because I was really concerned that they would just be like, no, we can't help you and just not be helpful whatsoever and just kind of be like, screw you, sorry, we can't help. I was joking with Shane about them giving me their tire so I could go and it turns out that is actually what they're going to do because they say it'll take a day for them to get the part and nobody else has this part which is disappointing but they will be replacing the wheel from one of their own Toyotas I guess and unfortunately it's gonna cost like $400 so this entire trip well this entire fiasco has costed me 400 for this, 110 ish for the tow, $50 for them to put on my spare, and then 117 for the hotel. So, holy shit. I like how this month my credit card just reset today, no, two days ago. And I was like, okay, fresh month, I'm going to be super frugal this month. And now I'm already negative $600 from this. And she has been lying here with me the whole time and a good down and aside from that I played a whole game of chess and I won. I wonder if a lot of the people playing mobile chess aren't that great because it has been kind of easy to win. I got second first first the three times I played it out fully so that was nice and honestly I have to say chess has saved me a little bit um, this trip because it really kept me entertained during times like this when I'm bored. But I'm going to walk back because I kind of feel bad. <laughs> the service parts guy drove over here with a Prius just to come get me to sign or give him some information. So I'm going to walk back just so I'll be nearby when they're ready. I am finally back on my journey. I've been driving for about 40 minutes. 
and the total cost of my repair turned out to be 486 expensive but nothing crazy like 600 I was thinking 600 after he kept coming back and telling me oh we found something new this new cost that we need to charge you for I still have about three hours left to drive before I get there I haven't eaten anything today because I left my hotel and went straight over to Toyota so unfortunately I am stopping at a McDonald's I guess on road trips fast food will be inevitable. I had Dairy Queen last night for dinner. I didn't manage to get in my workout, so today will be a different story. Once I get there, probably look up a hike, go hike, come back and work out. I don't know when I'll go to Meow Wolf. I still really need to figure that out. I just really don't want to pack today too hard. Needed to stop and take a picture of these because it looks so pretty with the clouds right over it. Can you imagine what the world would be like if you were at the top? Pretty. Finally made it to my Airbnb and I am actually on the way to hiking. I found this trail about 40 minutes out. There's another one that I saw that I liked. It was about an hour and a half away so I was like, eh, I don't think I want to go that far. That's really freaking far. So I put all my stuff inside and now hopefully we get a nice little hike in before I come back to the city. So we have begun our hike and getting here was terrible. There was about two miles of dirt road and it was pretty bumpy dirt road so even though I was taking it at less than 10 miles per hour, even sometimes like five miles per hour, there would be something scraping against the bottom of my car and that just really doesn't feel great. <laughs> I was so scared because any additional car trouble just seems like it would really suck. I don't want to be stranded anywhere anymore. So I'm glad to finally be here. Um, seems like there's absolutely nobody here. There's no cars at all. So that's great. And I actually don't know how far this trail goes, but I like the change of scenery. There's so much trees and green and shade compared to California and actually New Mexico is a very beautiful state. When I first thought about what I would be doing around here, I was thinking, you know, I wonder where I would need to go to see views like the ones from the movie Woman Walks Ahead, which is what inspired me to come here. And I feel like just driving on the highway, you see so much of it. The clouds, just so much open fields, and then you see mountains that look basically like Utah and it's so pretty and wow I'm breathing hard again. Tiny opening but as soon as I saw it I was like damn that's so pretty. Posing for a lovely photo. Break. Good job. All right let's go. You look so funny. We're <laughs> reaching some open space. Um, most of this hike has been pretty enclosed amongst the trees. So now that we're open, oh Jesus, all the sunlight is coming down on me. It's pretty hot. So I was looking up the trail distance <laughs> and it's 5.2 miles apparently. I have no idea how far I've gone. Oh, bug. I just don't like bigger bugs. Um, I've gone for about half an hour, 40 minutes by now. I don't know what that translates to, but my pacing is usually reasonably fast. I'm not like a slow walker or sluggish or anything. And I don't think my pace really changes all that much. So I am hoping I can get to the end. This isn't a loop, so I'm gonna have to turn around and go back the same way which is okay. So right now I am heading back for my hike. I am going to make three stops before I go back to my Airbnb and those three will be first one, Best Buy. I brought a wireless mouse with my laptop but I was stupid and I packed my laptop in my suitcase in a way where the USB dongle 
for my mouse got bent so it doesn't work anymore and I was not having fun playing chess yesterday with no mouse. Using the touchpad is a nightmare. So since I'm still gonna be here for three more nights, I wanna make sure <laughs> that I can play chess properly. After that, I need to get some food because I didn't eat anything today except for McDonald's nuggets and fries, which is bad. I also had fast food last night, so I wanna make sure that I eat something healthy today. And for some reason right now, I am kind of obsessing over juices or the acai bowl. And the acai bowl is really tough for me because it's a cold meal. I don't, I guess you can call it a meal, but it's cold. So usually I really don't enjoy eating those types of things because I have really sensitive teeth or just in general, my mouth is sensitive. So I don't really enjoy that sensation of it being so cold in your mouth. So the thing about acai bowls is I really like the ingredients because it's a ton of fruit. Usually it comes with strawberries, it comes with bananas, it comes with blueberries, and then it has some honey on it, it has some coconut, and I just really like all the ingredients. That's why I'm so tempted to eat it pretty often after I introduced myself to it. So. I found a juice place here and they sell both smoothies and an acai bowl. So the lighting in here is not that great either, but I finally gave her her food. She didn't eat since yesterday morning. Here I have everything set up, getting ready to go. So the thing is I first went to, here's my mouse. I first went to a different juice place that wasn't open. And then right next door was this rocket kitchen place, so I decided to get this chicken farm. But then afterwards, I was like, man, I'm fucking desperate. I really want a bowl. So here's my bowl, and here's a mango smoothie. I'll probably let this sit for a little bit, otherwise it's just gonna be too cold, so I'll definitely eat this first. It's hot. My eye is still twitching. Good morning. It's Friday, and I am leaving soon to go to the powwow. But just before I do that, I will get a smoothie for breakfast and I want to quickly show you guys around. Puppers are being so weird. So, front door, TV, we got a little table there. This is generally the living room area. We got a futon, whatever the hell you want to call it. Up here is the kitchen. Um, I'm too lazy to turn on the light, but what I will say is that this place is far from fancy. Um, it is pretty old in some areas, and some areas look alright. It was $49 a night. Here's the bedroom. Got all my shit there on the bottom. Riley's crate is here. And then here's the bathroom. Full length mirror. Sink shower um yeah so i would say that the airbnb itself is fine for my purpose but what i didn't actually think about which is so weird right because i focus so much on neighborhoods when i'm home and i didn't think about neighborhoods for my airbnb but this is definitely a not so great area because the houses around here all look worn down and I just feel like it's a low-income neighborhood but aside from that there are barking dogs everywhere so I took her for a walk just earlier and every single street there was a really aggressive dog barking at me through a fence or even a dog that was nearly able to fit through like it was a small black dachshund or something and that was just not great but it doesn't make me feel too happy about walking her around here but I have to. So I've been trying to stick to the road area and not in that neighborhood because I just don't feel so comfortable walking around the neighborhood. And plus, if I'm near the road, there aren't dogs as much. I mean, there still are because there are some houses right by the road, but less likely. So I think I've kind of learned something new aside from Utah where I think that I can't be too cheap about my cost for Airbnb because 
it does matter to me what the neighborhood is like and I want to be able to walk her around and feel happy about it. So another thing that really does suck is the next door neighbor right through there. They have, they have like two, three dogs or something and they are barking a lot. So sometimes it's weird. It's like all three of them barking nonstop for a couple minutes and then they stop but it happens like all hours of the day. So it happened like three times this morning and it woke me up. I really hate barking dogs, but the fact that they are able to disturb my sleep makes it even worse because they're right there. It's not super muffled. I think the walls might be pretty thin around here. Other dogs just started barking. I really wished that people could understand that dogs bark, yes, but that doesn't make barking nonstop like that acceptable, right? I feel like a lot of people who tend to own dogs or even in worse neighborhoods like this, there will be so many dogs that are just like walking around in yards of shit and not being monitored whatsoever. They're just left out there in the yard for the whole day and that's kind of why they turn to behaving that way and it sucks, <laughs> but I will head out. Oh. Oh, wow, you're so smart. You, oh, it's focused on the ground. Puppers. Good, all right, you gotta put you away. I gave her some food and I think she's, she's awesome because whenever I go to work, I always, you know, limit how much water she takes in the morning, so sometimes, she drinks a tiny bit first, and then if I'm home for like the afternoon or the evening, I have to tell her like, it's okay, you can drink more. But this morning she drank like three sips and then stopped and I was like, oh, okay, that's good. Because even though it would be possible for me to come back in four hours or five hours, I kind of don't want to do that. I'd rather stay there the whole time. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use mirrors because uh, I had a tripod thing for my camera, those small ones, and I lost it when I went to Joshua Tree. I don't know how because I never took it out of my backpack and also my hairbrush. Those two items I never took out of my backpack and I somehow lost them. It drives me crazy because I don't know how that happened. The latest thing that I wanted to see was 4 o'clock where they're doing something with horses. Horses and riders. So I want to make sure I stay for that and if I go now, It'll be about five hours to six hours before I come back. I want to make sure I get my breakfast first, so I'm going to get a smoothie and then I'm going to stop over. And hopefully the fact that I'm going a little later after the doors opened will mean that traffic will be less. I kind of hope so. I am here to get my smoothie. I'm contemplating whether I should get one donut. I don't know. I'm not so sure. Okay, I caught a 24 ounce mango. So. Maybe I'm just really bad at size, but the 12 ounce cup looked so small and I was like, I wanna feel reasonably full. So I got 24 and I kinda get the feeling 24 might be too much, but I did end up getting a donut. This is a cream filled, iced with cream filled. I really like glazed. I think, well, iced is probably different, but no. I went over. Hopefully they don't make me throw this out. I know some places don't let you bring in outside stuff, right? So I don't know how this one works, although I kind of feel like they won't be that strict. This is an unusual event. to get this Indian taco. 
and normally I don't really care for taco like foods but um, the ingredients seemed all right although the chili is a little spicy and this is a fry bread which I kept seeing at all these booths and I didn't know what it was so I really wanted to try it out and this is what I ended up getting. There was another dish called the fryberry that looked really good. It was strawberries and whipped cream on top of a on top of a fry bread but I don't want more calories for today especially not in that category. Lucky. Hi, cutes. <laughs> Break. Good. Hi, peppers. Hi, you. <laughs> you almost tripped going up the step, you silly girl. So we are on another trail. So I am on this trail called Saw Mine and fuck, what was it called? <laughs> no, something, whatever, who cares? Really nice, not as sunny, but I wanted to make sure I explored as much of New Mexico scenery and nature as much as possible. So this time I decided to go north. Yesterday's hike was east, so I was wondering if I could see some sort of different views. I don't tend to like hikes where you're so enclosed. So yesterday a lot of it we were in the trees and it's cooler that way, but today there's no sun so it's not a big deal. And I really like to see stuff like this when I'm walking out here. But I guess one of my concerns is that shit. It is about four something, actually. I keep forgetting that I'm mountain time. So by the time I got home, I was at the powwow all morning. So I felt like I was there so long, but still have a lot of my day left over. And for people in San Diego, it's one hour behind. So it's only midday for them. But by now, I just feel like the day is winding down. So what better way to go on a hike and finish it off, then get some dinner and then go back home once again. It looks like the clouds are falling out of the sky and down into those hills. I don't know why it has that effect though. I've never seen clouds look like that before. It's kind of like wispy fingers reaching down or something, if that makes any sense. <laughs> What the hell kind of a weird blockade is that? That's definitely not natural. What the heck? Mm. Puppers. Sit. Good girl. Good. We're gonna have to turn around. There's no way past. Break. Good. Come on. Let's go. You lead the way. Go pups! Just finished my hike with her and uh, it started drizzling a little bit which actually felt really nice so I kind of wanted to talk Ooh, it's starting to get sunny over here! So let me talk about the first day before I forget anything so I arrived around 11.30 gates opened at 10 a.m. First thing I did when I went in there was I went inside Tingley Coliseum, which is where all the uh, performances were taking place. So I went in and I stayed for about two hours. They did a grand entry for all the different tribes and they were all wearing their traditional garb, which looked really nice. And they all have so much pop of color. So something that I did end up asking because when I was talking about this with Shane, he told me that he looked up that Native Americans are the only people that are legally allowed to own eagle feathers. So when I saw all those different costumes, I was really curious to know if they were all real materials, right? Not any fake shit. So when I was at the trader's market, I was just walking around wandering and I was looking for my uh, VIP gift, which was so bad. It's like four snacks and one of them was a pickle. I'll show you guys later. She did say that all of them are real, so 
that's cool. Oh, it's starting to rain a bit more. Let me pull up my windows. So yeah, I watched them perform a little bit. They did some dances and I guess it's hard to know exactly what you're seeing because a lot of their dances are a lot of chanting, right? And drum banging and then they're just doing their thing. So it was hard for me to differentiate between different tribes and what exactly their dance represented. That would have been really helpful. Yeah, after two hours, I went out to wander and actually something embarrassing kind of happened and it kind of still hurts. <laughs> so you know how sometimes when you sit at an event, there's rows of seats, right? So instead of inconveniencing people in my row to sit back and let me pass through because some of them were taking pictures and video, I decided to step on my chair and go over to the next row up because there were much less people sitting down at the time. So I messed up and I kind of, once I swung my leg over, my foot that was on the chair kind of lifted a little bit, which caused it to come up, right? So I slipped and I kind of caught my inner thigh on the backs of the seat, which kind of hurt. Like it's kind of sore right now. I can feel it. <laughs> and I did this in front of several people. So they're like, oh shit, are you okay? <laughs> and yeah, painful, but I'm all right. <laughs> there were a few things I was really interested in though. There was a booth where there were a lot of horses painted on, I don't know, hide? I don't know what you call it, sorry. So that looked kind of nice because it seemed more unique and original and has my one of my favorite animals, horses, on it. I really like the image of horses running because to me that kind of symbolizes freedom and adventure and just whatever you want to do, you can do it. So that's why I tend to really like seeing images of that. There were a lot of food stands. I tried an Indian taco. I can't say for sure I liked it that much. It was decent, but for $17, I could get two meals, right? And so I didn't want to be too stingy at the time because I was like, eh, I'm here. Let's try some of the food around here. So I got it and it was okay. Although the fry bread that was the base of the taco that is extremely that is extremely similar to this chinese thing that we have called um i think it's called tong yu bing i stayed there for maybe 4 to 5 hours i do plan on going back tomorrow later in the day i think i want to do meow wolf in the morning like shortly after i wake up because there's no need to go there so early especially because that's when you hit traffic going into the event yeah, probably take more advantage of my VIP seating, even though, honestly, I think VIP is just so not worth it. And I can actually get service here, so I should probably head back. I feel like this futon couch thing is perfect for her. She gets to curl up. Cutie pups. Tired from her hike. All right. I am really hungry, so really quickly before I start eating, let me show you guys the ridiculousness of this VIP bag. Because honestly, it does seem a little annoying at times when organizers make you pay a decent amount extra for VIP and they really don't make your experience worthwhile. So aside from the seat, they gave me this. You know how much this shit costs? You get a packet of these for like a couple dollars. So this is like a couple cents. Organic coffee. A piece of paper with Whataburger coupon. And then they gave me a fucking pickle. What the heck? All right, I have a delicious salad waiting for me.